In this video I will show you how to test a serial mediation with Hayes process function for R. I will show you which parameters to use for a model like this and how to interpret the output. In this serial mediation we have three indirect effects. The first one through mediator 1, the second one through mediator 2 and the third one and that's the one that's of primary interest to us is through both mediators. First I show you how to initialize the process function for R, then we look at the serial mediation syntax, and then we interpret the output. So using process with R. Process for R is not a package, it's a user-defined function. You can download it here from Hayes website, the link is in the description. After downloading it, you'll find an R file process.r, and you have to run this file each session you are using process to initialize this function. So this is process.r, control A, control Enter, and it takes a minute or two to initialize this function. And then you can use this process function. Next, the serial mediation syntax. There are four important points to remember. If you use process, you have to put the variables within quotation signs. Variables in R, of course, are case sensitive. If you use binary variables, which is possible, they must not be factor variables. So you have to recode them into numeric variables. And the function name process is written in lowercase letters. Here we get the message process is now ready for use, so now we could run process. This is the syntax I use when I run process model 6. I start with the data frame, the dependent variable, the independent variable, the two mediators, in the right order of course, then the model number, model number 6. For the indirect effects I'd like to get betters as well with the f-size parameter. I want to get the total effect, that is the effect without the mediators. And for the A path and B path and so on, I would like to have betters as well. For that I use the stand parameter. In this example I have two covariates, which I include with a cov parameter. The indirect effect is estimated by bootstrapping. I'd like to increase the number of bootstrap samples to 10,000 in order to get more stable results. I'd like to get bootstrap results not only for the indirect effect, but also for the A path, B path and so on with a model BT parameter. And since bootstrapping is a random process, normally we would get slightly different bootstrap confidence interval each time we run the analysis, even with the same data. In order to get the same results each time I run the analysis, I set a seed value here. Now to the interpretation of the output. Here's a warning message. I don't really understand what that is about. It seems to be about formatting. I don't think that that is important. Apart from that, down here we would see error messages if there were any errors. Fortunately, there are none. Here we get a short recap of the parameters we have used. This is the model for the prediction of mediator 1. That is for this path. So we have as predictors the independent variable and both covariates. Interesting for us is here we have a significant effect from the independent variable on mediator 1. The coefficients here are b's, that is unstandardized regression weights, and down here you have the betters, that is, the standardized regression weights. Then the model predicting mediator 2. So this one. Here are the two interesting effects. The effect from mediator 1 on mediator 2 and the effect from the independent variable mediator 2. And as the last component, the model predicting the dependent variable. So in this model here, the effect from the independent variable, that is, the C prime path, the direct effect, the effect from mediator 1, which is not significant, and the effect from mediator 2, which is significant. Those three models are based on certain assumptions, that is, that we have normality and homoscasticity of the residuals. But we had requested bootstrapping results for those models as well. So we look at the bootstrap results, because those would be robust against possible violations of those assumptions. They are down here. The path from the independent variable to mediator 1 significant. Independent variable to mediator 2 not significant. Mediator 1 to mediator 2 is significant here. It was not significant based on the normality assumption test above. But the results down here are those I would trust. Because they should be correct whether those assumptions are met or not met. And for the dependent variable, the direct effect C prime is significant based on bootstrapping. Not significant is the effect from the mediator 1 to the dependent variable, but significant is the effect from the mediator 2 to the dependent variable, 
because you have significance with the confidence interval if the zero is not included in the confidence interval. So those are the effects that are significant. The next part of the output is the total effect model. That is, it's a regression without looking at the mediators. So do we have an effect from the independent variable on the dependent variable? And this total effect is here, controlling for all two covariates. It's significant. Unfortunately, for this effect, we don't get bootstrap results. So this result is not as robust as the other results where we had additional bootstrap confidence intervals. And here the most important part, total effect, direct effect, and indirect effect. Total effect is just repetition of the effect above. Direct effect, again, is just repetition of the effect above. The effect CS in the last column is completely standardized. That's a beta, whereas the effect in the first column is a B, an unstandardized regression weight. And the key information is here, indirect effects of X on Y. We have a total indirect effect, that is, the sum of all three possible indirect effects, that is, this effect plus this effect plus this effect. The total indirect effect is significant, because the bootstrap confidence interval doesn't include zero, and this effect is the sum of the three partial indirect effects. Down here you find a legend, so int1 is the effect via the first mediator, int2 is the effect via the second mediator, and int3 is the effect via both mediators. And here we see this is not significant, this is not significant, but the third one going through both mediators, that is significant. So here we have a significant serial mediation. This table, those are Bs, the effect that is unstandardized regression weights. If you want to report betters instead, you would use this table, because completely standardized effects are betters. Where do we go next? If you want to test a serial mediation with R, there are two additional topics that are relevant for you. First, how to deal with regression assumptions, because process doesn't check those assumptions for you. And second, how to perform a power analysis for a serial mediation. You'll find the links to those tutorials in the description of this video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video.